All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about the Rising Star Award and the race for that award towards the end of the year. As I record this, we're halfway through round 17, which means there's been 16 nominees for the award so far. So obviously seven players can still be nominated, but we're gonna take an early look at who might be the favorite to win that award. Obviously now it's come towards the sort of business end of the season, all the finals, ladders, predictor stuff is all coming out. Likewise, we just did a predictions video talking about the Brownlow on Druzy's channel, so do go check that out. But today on my video, we're gonna be taking a specific look at the Rising Star Award and who is in line to take out that award come season's end. So the way I've kind of collated this video is I've taken a look at what I think are probably the top 10 candidates and also taken a look at their odds courtesy of Sportsbet as well. And I've come up with a bit of a list in terms of likelihood of who is most likely to win the award if we're awarded now. Obviously, there are a lot of variables at play, obviously, a player can still get injured or a player who hasn't even been nominated yet could get nominated and sort of thrust his name into calculations as well. But I think we've seen enough where we can start this conversation at the very least. So unlike all of my other videos, pretty much, I am gonna start in descending order, which means I'm gonna start with the player that I think is the most likely or the current favorite to win the Rising Star Award. That player is GWS's Tom Green. He was nominated back in round nine and is currently paying $2.75 odds on Sportsbet to win the award. Now, if you don't know much about him, he's a big bodied 188 centimeter midfielder, averaging 20 possessions and four clearances a game. And he absolutely smokes all the other candidates in terms of contested possessions and clearances. That's not a big surprise. He's probably one of the most physically developed players in this whole sort of class of players, but nonetheless, he's had some really brilliant games at the level so far, and he's had six games with more than 24 possessions. He was nominated for the award back in round nine, but I think his best game I saw up close and personal against my beloved West Coast Eagles, where he kicked two goals and 27 possessions, and is probably playing at a higher level than any other players so far. Now the player currently sort of pegged to be the second most likely to take out the award is Luke Jackson of the Melbourne Footy Club paying $4.50 on Sportsbet. Now Luke Jackson's a talent plenty of people have been talking about. He was pick three back in the 2019 draft just a couple of years ago and of course being a tall athletic ruckman was sort of pegged to be maybe a bit more of a slow burn. That being said, he is playing a pretty important role in a team that is contending for the flag this year, no doubt. As I record this, they're currently top of the ladder, although that might change by the end of the round. He averages 14 disposals, 10 hitouts a game, and he's been a very, very worthy backup to Max Gorn, who's probably having one of the best seasons of his career. Obviously, there's a lot of upside with Jackson as he fills out. At the moment, his main plus is his athleticism, but you can really see him developing into an absolute gem. But he's had multiple games of over 20 possessions this year, and he's come on a little bit quicker than I expected, so that puts him right in the mix for a Rising Star Award. The player currently third most likely, in my opinion, to take out the Rising Star Award is Lachlan Scholl from the Adelaide Footy Club, who was nominated back in round four and leads all of the other current nominees so far for possessions a game with 20.1. He's a running defender with a really good kick. He leads this group for meters gained and overall effective disposal. So he obviously generates a lot of run and carry for his club, but he also uses the ball as well off the back flank. Next up is maybe a little bit more of a left field one. I don't really feel like it's left field, but I think the player that should be fourth in the rankings of the Rising Star Award is Melbourne's Trent Rivers, but Sportsbet don't back me up. They reckon he is at $67 odds to take out this award. Taken back in the 2019 draft in obviously just his second season, this year. He's established himself just about as an undroppable best 22 player for a side that's right in contention and has led the ladder most of the year. He plays as a medium-sized defender, averaging 16 possessions a game, and he leads all the other players that are eligible for the Rising Star this year for intercepts. He's a great competitor, he provides great drive for his club, and he's breached 20 disposals in a game three times this year. I think those odds have done him dirty. The next player we've got is, unbelievably, another Melbourne player, and it's ridiculous that they've got, in my opinion, three of the top five candidates for this award, despite being first or second on the ladder. I'm talking about James Jordan, who is currently paying $6 odds on sports bet to win the entire award. He's a second year midfielder, he's about 20 and a half years old and he's fairly well built at 186 centimeters and 80 kilos. He averages 18 disposals a game and is quite a prolific tackler averaging more than five per game this season. What's been most impressive is that he is a regular contributor in a side that has been contention all season and for five games in a row, he's had more than 20 possessions. He was nominated in round eight, but his round nine performance against the Blues was particularly eye-catching where he notched up 13 tackles. The next player I wanna 
mention is Essendon's Nick Cox, who was nominated back in round 12, and is currently paying $14 odds to take out this award. Now, he was obviously drafted last year in the top 10, and it was I think he was drafted as a key defender, but he's kind of established himself as 199 centimeter midfielder, wingman, whatever. He's played a bit of forward, key back, obviously, so it's really unclear what his best position is just yet. Now, if you look at just his stats, he averages just 12 and a half disposals a game, and I don't think that's a fair reflection of his talent. He's obviously shown great versatility and a certain game-breaking talent as well with his athleticism as well, and he really takes the game on and he's a really entertaining player to watch as well. Druzy and I watched him up close and personal in the Dreamtime game where he had 23 possessions and ultimately won his Rising Star nomination. He's one of the few players in this sort of pool of talent where it's really unclear how to project what kind of player he will be, but I feel very confident he'll be a very good one. Next up, we'll talk about his teammate Harrison Jones, who was nominated back in round 14 and is now paying $13 odds to win this award. Jones is an impressive one. He's quite a wiry sort of key forward. He stands at 194 centimeters, 75 kilos, and doesn't look like he'd be a great contested player, but he leads all comers in terms of contested marks in terms of the Rising Star nominees. He's also kicked 21 goals from 14 games and is second amongst all the nominees for goals. For an undersized key forward, I think he's holding up exceptionally well in a team that really needs a key forward presence. And for a player that's quite underdeveloped, you would say he's doing really, really well. Next up, we'll talk about another Adelaide footballer. This time it's Riley Thilthorpe, who was nominated back in round 13 and is now paying 15 lot odds. To be completely honest with you, I've said his name a hundred times and I don't really know if it's pronounced Thilthorpe or Tilthorpe. It's spelled Thilthorpe, but I feel silly saying that. I've heard other people say Tilthorpe, so please let me know in the comments what it is. I've said his name like a hundred times across 30 videos since the draft last year, and I, I just need to know. But anyway, of course, this guy was picked two in last year's draft behind Jamara Ugel Hagen, and of course, he debuted in style, kicking five goals early this year against Hawthorne. Unfortunately for him, Jacob Krasitsky played really well that game, and he wasn't nominated until he kicked the winning goal against Adelaide several weeks later. He's obviously kind of a ruck forward playing for Adelaide then those types tend to come on longer and that's why he didn't debut straight away and I think despite the fact that he leads the group for contested marks per game the fact that he's only played 10 out of 17 games holds him down the rankings and I do wonder if he played like this since round one perhaps he'd be much closer to the top of this list. Now we're getting into some of the more speculative picks for the Paps for the Rising Star Award it'd be crazy to think these guys could still win the award but with a big finish to the season who knows the first player I'll mention is Mitch Georgiatis from the Port Adelaide Football Club a player that I really enjoy watching who is currently paying $21 odds to win this award. He started the year really well with a bang in round one, kicking four goals, but unfortunately he's faded somewhat. His consistency hasn't been there. He's only averaging 10 and a half disposals a game and one and a half goals a game. That being said, I think he is a super athletic talent and if he gets his shit together fairly soon, could make a late charge for perhaps a top five finish. He's a super talent. I'm really jealous of Port Adelaide and if he doesn't finish high in the Rising Star Award, it's not really a big indictment on him. He's still gonna be a super player. Next, we'll talk about Tom Powell from the North Melbourne Football Club and unfortunately, Unfortunately for them, he still hasn't actually got a nomination, but he's put together some really good form and is still paying $17 odds. In fact, that's better odds than some of the players who have been nominated. He's played 13 games this season, averaging 17 disposals a game, which is pretty good going in what is clearly an underdeveloped rebuilding midfielder at North. It can't be an easy job to play in that midfield this season. For a first year player, he's a really good tackler. In fact, he notched up eight tackles along with 25 disposals against Fremantle, and it's bizarre to think that didn't get him a nomination. It's early days, of course, but he surprised quite a few by shining brighter than Will Phillips, their prized top pick, and it does look like North Melbourne have got a bit of a winner there. So that's probably the top 10 candidates in my eyes, but we can throw out a few more speculative ones. Of course, there's Matthew Rao from the Gold Coast who hasn't been nominated this year, but is still paying $34 odds. Again, that's still better than some players who have been nominated. Hasn't really he hit his groove this year, averaging just 14 disposals from his five games. But last year, of course, we know that he did really well. I think he got nine Brownlow votes in the games that he played, and he averages, you know, 17 disposals and a goal and a half in shortened quarters. The fact that he's only played five games also doesn't help, so I don't know if he's a realistic chance to take out the award unless he hits his straps in the same way he did last year. I wouldn't bet on it, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility, so he's definitely a worthy mention. Another player that's not getting a lot of love in terms of the rising star conversation, I think, is Devin Robinson who was nominated in round 15, of course, and still paying $51 despite having what I would say a very, very solid season. He's played 12 out of 17 games. He's ranked second for tackles per game with 4.8. Only averages 15 disposals a game, but he's done some exceptional defensive jobs for the Lions this year, and I think he deserves a little bit more credit than he's gotten. 
The final player that is worth a mention that probably isn't a realistic chance having played just seven games, but Cody Waitman is enjoying a bit of a breakout period for the Western Bulldogs. He was nominated in round 10 and is paying $17 odds, which are quite short. He's averaging two goals and 12 disposals a game. So certainly demonstrating the talent to be close to winning the award, but if it weren't for the fact that he just played seven games, I'd be more confident. So there you have it guys, that is my top 10 slash 13 candidates for the Rising Star Award. I'd probably double down if I had to make a prediction on Tom Green being the most likely. He's probably the most consistently playing at a high AFL level. Again, of course, there's unpredictable variables in this like injury and stuff like that. And of course, you know, some of the players in the lower half of that top 10 could certainly come from the clouds and, you know, have a really good finish to the season and put their name up for sure. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the Rising Star Award. Who do you think's going to win it? Do you agree with some of the comments that I've made? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.